Cannon, the so-called underrated powerhouse of destruction. By who, you ask? Me. But I feel like some people could agree. Cannon is a really interesting weapon, and it was one of the weapons on release to have only two legends before going to a different weapon. Soon after that though, we got two more, and then went on a bit of a hiatus until Onyx, and here we are today. You don't see people exactly saying the weapon is OP, and not really down in the ground week. In fact, no one really talks about it in general. It's a fairly balanced weapon in my opinion, at least in the current meta anyways. I see a lot of people saying it's really annoying, which we'll get into later. I love the weapon, but I'm really bad at it. Like, horrifically bad. But I've always somewhat liked it. Lin Fei for the most part, but it's still neat. It can be a really straightforward weapon if your enemy doesn't perform well, but it's really difficult to do well with in my opinion. That doesn't mean its attacks are bad though. Neutral it can be pretty good for combo starters, catch easy dodge reads, and continue from there. It's pretty safe too actually, and even sends downwards. Unfortunately no true combo starting off it, which makes it a pretty good move, but not super fantastic. Sidely also doesn't have any true combos off it, but it's still a great move to catch dodge reads. Like, crazy great. I remember the whole tragedy of when Sidelight Sayer was only a few frames, like two, maybe one frames, and it was super OP. Then it got gutted to where it was jumpable, and that was too much. And now it's about three or four frames if I recall correctly, and I think that's perfectly fine. While Sidelight Sayer does work, I find Sidelight Dare working on occasions, maybe even ground pound depending on the situation. A very solid move. Downlight is where your bread and butter combos come in for cannon. There's some seriously simple and rewarding combos you can do with Downlight. Downlight Nair and Downlight Dare are two of the most simple and rewarding, but other ones like Downlight Sair, Downlight GC Neutral Light, and Downlight Reverse Side Light are also true. Harder to do, but still true if you pull them off right. Although, I'd stick with Downlight Nair for killing and Downlight Dare for comboing. Especially with the current test features, if you Downlight Dare and catch a dodge read, you could probably zero to death the enemy. It's crazy nuts right now. Cannon's best grounded attack, considering the true combo potential. Nair simply hits above you, and of course is what you'll use to kill. Maybe juggle enemies above you. Apparently, Downlight Nair is true starting at 170 damage, which I didn't even know, but it can be true earlier if you hit Downlight later. Regardless, you'll likely hit it and be using Nair for kills a lot. I can say the same for Sair too. Similar to Lance Sair in the way that you travel with it when you use it. I find them to be pretty similar in general because depending on how you use the move, it can be true with other moves too. Sair Sidelight, Sair Dare, Sair Recovery, and yeah, that's actually about it. Some of these are really specific though, so I'm a bit iffy on it. It's still great for comboing on enemies with no dodge options and hell, even coming back to stage. You'll find yourself using it a lot. Dare is also a very nice attack on cannon. I personally like using it to approach. Although, that makes it much harder to string with the weapon. At least from my experience, it doesn't go true with much, the only notable one is downlight dare for me, as the rest are really specific or hard to do. It's still great for keeping enemies lower down and comboing into your grounded moves. It'll prove useful for sure. And cannon recovery is pretty simple. I honestly have not a lot to say about it. Force feels really strong, but I suppose that's to compensate for Nair's force. Combos with some light attacks, but not really in kill confirmed situations. Ground Pound is really strong. Like, super strong. I'm not kidding. This attack hits in a really generous area. It's a good area for when you use an aerial, pretty decent, but using it grounded, the blast area spreads pretty far. Not incredibly, but it's really good. I'm not kidding, doing an instant ground bomb with cannon actually works for me. You know, like how people would do it with blasters? I'd suggest it. Ground Power is also apparently true with a ton of cannon's attacks, but of course they're the most specific and hard to do true combos on cannon. I don't think I've ever seen anyone pull it off. On to the next section, what are the reasons people like cannon? Of course, the string potential. If you catch a dodge read with cannon, you're going to town on the enemy. Especially with the test features, you can do crazy damage off a dodge read. It feels really clean when done right, and I, I can't disagree with that either. You can see some people might like it because it's underrated too, although it's not an entirely valid reason. Maybe for me. To be honest, I can't think of anything else other than string potential. It's a smooth weapon to play, and I feel like anyone with enough dedication would feel what I mean when playing cannon. I have a bit more on what to say for people who dislike cannon. Main reason is the same one for liking the weapon, the string potential. Some people may find it annoying to get out of his combos, and while I do agree, it's to a certain extent. Cannon isn't an easy weapon to play, and honestly I respect 60% of the cannon legends. The weapon itself is super respectable. Annoying though, I completely understand. Which leads into the other reason people might hate it, the difficulty it takes to play the weapon. A bit off topic, but I don't understand people who say Blasters of Scythe are the hardest weapons. I get they aren't entirely easy, but Blasters has pretty easy to do slash reliable combos, and with decent spacing you'll play it well. And Scythe? Well, that's a controversial one, so I won't get into it. Regardless, Cannon in my opinion is the hardest weapon in the game to play, so I get why some people may be turned away from playing the weapon. Which segues into the next section. Nice one, love lady. Even though I'm Vrax Cheeks at this weapon, I'll try my best to give useful tips about it. Tip number one, Cannon's Grounded Kit. I'm not kidding, Cannon's Grounded Kit is your main go-to for comboing. Use Neutral Light to try and bait out a dodge, and depending where they dodge, do a Sair or maybe Sidelight and D-Light for Grounded. 
dare if they jump or dodge up and etc. I find a lot of people who do this and dare is a great option. Otherwise, enemies who dodge into you or away, Sayer or Side Light and Deed Light would be a good punish. Downlight 2, abuse the true combos. It's how you get great amounts of damage. Although Downlight isn't entirely free, it takes good spacing and time to use it correctly, otherwise you'll get easily punished. And tip number 2, offstage gameplay. The cannon, while it does exceed in grounded combos, exceeds in offstage gameplay as well. I mean, come on, that's how those zero to deaths are possible. Just don't overextend, because some cannon combos require all your jumps and can really screw you over if you perform them wrong. That's sort of why I like to do some cannon combos more later in health since doing Sayer or Recovery at the end actually has a chance to kill rather than having you bring the enemy all the way to the death barrier just to kill them, and in the result, get yourself killed. Tip number three, Sig True combos. All cannon legends, excluding Sidra, have downlight in Sig True, but a lot of them are strange cases. I found Zola's downlight insect to be really hard to hit despite it supposedly being true. In fact, I never actually got it. Isaiah and Onyx were really hard to do, but I eventually got them, and Linfei was the only reliable one, but only at lower damages. All I can say is, don't use Downlight Insig to kill. Yes, it may kill earlier than Downlight Nair at times, but they're so difficult to do, true, that they aren't worth going for, and end up being more risky for the reward. Tier list wise, out of S, A, and B, I want to place Cannon in A tier. I'm not kidding, we're in a point of the meta where every weapon feels at least S tier or A tier. While Cannon didn't get directly buffed, the test features greatly benefit Cannon, as I've talked about before. One dodge read and you're in a whole knuckle sandwich of a zero to death. It's painful, but crazy fun to play in my opinion. I've already said it, and I'll have to say it again, but Cannon is by far the hardest weapon to play. Yes, it may have those zero to death combos, but don't a lot of weapons do? Maybe not one dodge zero to deaths, but some other weapons get crazy true four piece, or hell, even five piece true combos off of a single read. They do a ton of damage as well. Spear, Gauntlet, Scythe, Greatsword, all of those weapons do this and likely more. Apart from doing zero to deaths, Cannon is truly a hard weapon to get a good grasp around with its moveset. It doesn't help that some of the Cannon Legends just aren't that great, which is why the weapon itself is pretty ignored. I personally think Zol and Onyx are S tier, and while that is personal preference, I hope some people can agree with me. Regardless, I respect Cannon players, for the most part. Zol, Onyx. It takes a lot of thinking and stringing around to play the weapon well, and honestly, I can't wait until we get a new Cannon Legend. I'd hope for a Cannon Greatsword, maybe Cannon Lance, but we'll see. Cannon Spear? Regardless, that wraps up the Cannon Analysis. Take what I said with a grain of salt, and if you really want to learn the weapon, you could use what I said, but a pro puts it into better words. And thanks for watching, and of course, keep on brawling.